and then I'm going to be doing a review. I have written bits and pieces of the review, like I normally do. Uh, just, just you know, putting an outline down and, and writing down the, the, the bits and pieces that needs to be talked about. Uh, so this coming week I should be finalising it and you should see my review up of Lonely Mountains Downhill on the N Europe website. And this is an isometric checkpoint racer. You always start at the top of a mountain and you work your way down through a trail, down the, on your mountain bike, down the pass and always down back to your home base. Uh, first of all, I thought there wasn't much content. You know, there are four mountains to go through and only one is unlocked at the beginning. There are four trails on each mountain. So that's a total of 16 trails or 16 tracks. So I thought that's, that's not much. But as you wind your way down these tracks, the thing that kind of strikes you is the controls are perfect. They are so spot on. And it, you, you, can, you can change between two kind of um, control methods. You can have that kind of um, top down, I don't remember, like uh, Ivan, Ivan Iron Man. You push left and right and it kind of rotated your car. It doesn't matter which way you're looking at it. The left and right would rotate you anti-clockwise and clockwise. Or they've got a setting which is the default setting, which is a setting you really do want to keep is that whichever way you point your control stick, your bike moves that direction on screen. There is a turning circle. So I, I, if you've ever done any mountain biking downhills, and I have, I used to do it up the back of my, my grands. I used to be absolute crazy when I was a kid. And I used to race down it. I don't know how I didn't break my neck so many times. <laughs> but the feeling of going around a corner and looping the control stick around, taking your foot, take, which is the ZR is your kind of a pedal button, so it's accelerate, ZL is brake. So if it's not such a sharp corner, you don't need to use the brake, but if you take your foot off your pedals and then just, just rotate it in a kind of a U shape and slide around the corner, such a great feeling. And what makes that feeling so good as well is the sound design in the game. There's no music. Nothing, nothing to take away from that you're this lone biker in this uh, landscape at, uh, at the top of a mountain. So all you can hear is the wind going through the trees. You can hear sheep uh, braying in the background. You can hear woodpeckers pecking on certain levels as well as because there's different uh, four different mountains. There's different soundscapes for each mountain. Rushing waterfalls, trickling streams. It's the the sound and the way the 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 noise, the clacking of the the bike wheels going around, and the grinding of the dirt as your bike wheel hits the dirt is just spot on. You know, it it's very difficult to to know whether or not to play it in handheld, and put some headphones in and be completely immersed by that sound. But then the Joy Cons have let me down. They don't. They're not really. You don't feel that kind of response as the Pro Controller. The Pro Controller is perfect for this, and I've loved to play it more on my TV, with the volume pretty much up to full. Um, four mountains, like I say, one is like a pine, rocky pine mountain, which is the beginning one, easier tracks. Redmore Peaks then is these autumnal, beautiful red colours in like a, I suppose a rocky mountain, Canadian-esque area. Then you go on to Sierra Rivera, which is a desert, uh, like the Grand Canyon. And then you end up on Mount Riley, which is a little bit like the first one, but far more difficult with uh, more trees to uh, traverse through. I've... I basically I've gone through the be beginner challenges took me about four and a half hours to completely finish all the beginner challenges which then as you as you start the game you just got to get from the top to the bottom there's no challenges you just take your time learn the track work your way down there's a lot of shortcuts to work through you you can find alternative routes by jumping off little cliffs and and unlocking certain bikes different bikes have different stats so some are built for speed some are built for durability so they take a fall better um there'll be no challenges in the beginning then you go to the beginner once you finish all the beginners and get those challenges you then unlock the expert modes and that's where things start to pick up um there are some challenges on that expert mode which are you know I, i've gone down in the beginner mode and it's exactly the same track exactly the same bike 
but I've gone down and maybe I've finished one trail in two minutes and six seconds and I've fallen 44 times. And then the the advanced expert will say, right, do it on the same bike, 15 seconds less, only seven falls. And uh, I can see how people have said it's frustrating because of those expert challenges, but you don't have to do them. I mean, I've enjoyed just gliding my way down these mountains and pushing myself to do the beginner challenges. There's also uh, further things to unlock, like night mode, which is another set of basically expert challenges. And every track then you can go down with your headlight lighting the way up, which is rather treacherous. I've, I, you know, I, I've, I haven't settled on a score for it yet, but uh, it, uh, from, from what I've said, what do you reckon my score will be? I reckon probably, I, uh, maybe an eight, possibly a nine. That's what I'm, I, I'm unsure of. You know, it's, it is definitely an eight. Mm-hmm. Is it a nine? It sounds great, Not, actually. To be honest, I, th- it, uh, I wasn't aware of the the little things, the details that you said there. So I might keep my eye closer eye on this one because i was interested in it i think it looks great but if it plays really well as well then that's definitely a good thing i've noticed and they're very infrequent there's sometimes a frame hiccup there's like a pause in a frame mm-hmm. and it, it especially when you go through a checkpoint but i mean i played it for four and a half hours i think i've only noticed it twice where there's a drop frame and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I've advanced a little bit further than I would have and, and it's put my concentration off. But when you do get into the concentration of, and you, you can get, you know, you, you start getting accurate going down these down these tracks, it does, really does feel like the real thing. Good. Nice. Yeah. Sounds, like, sounds like a lovely, lovely game. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm really actually tempted myself. It's just the, the price tag. I think it's like, what, seventeen ninety nine. Ninety nine. 99 Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely one that I'm going to put on the watch list and and see in a few months' time, maybe, if it's, it's down. Um, Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a like if you've enjoyed our content. You can also check out our other great content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the Any Cafe podcast from all good podcast providers. Just follow the links in the description below.